lot of times people people kind of make their own sense of what it is and it's really the same thing um, so uh, just go ahead and make sure you enunciate uh, so everyone can hear you um, and if you can't hear somebody just raise your hand and we'll ask folks to say it a little louder so we'll start off with our question uh, one and two over here yeah, so uh, number one, why did God become man uh, to sacrifice himself on the cross uh, to, to defeat sin and death and to give us a model of how to live our lives? Beautiful. Um, the only thing I would add to that, which all those were right, but also to like open heaven, to just open heaven for us, to create that bridge for us. And number two? Uh, for number two, what does Jesus show us the way to? Um, he shows us the truth of who he is, um, the life he has planned for us, and the, the main way is uh, the way we are to live in order to spend eternity in heaven. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And number three. Uh, Christianity was known as the New Way. Why is that a fitting title? Well, we were talking about how... Um, the text says that, and the video kind of said how Adam and Eve with original sin wounded human nature. So then Christianity being a rebirth and a new way for humanity. Um, and that kind of leads into number four, uh, Jesus being the way, how would you explain that? This new way of this bridge, like the metaphor that, that Mike had used about the bridge to eternal happiness. So this is a new way, a new bridge to that eternal happiness and to repair that that damage that was done to human nature with original sin. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Uh, number five, what do you guys get? Um, so that one is, who was Jesus' first disciple? Uh, that would be Mary, in yeah. pronunciation. <laughs> Lesson that I taught. Um, and number six was um, why are Jesus' baptism and transfiguration, also known as epiphanies, which are manifestations of God. And in both those instances, God really voiced his manifestation at, at both those events and made his presence known. Cool. Yeah, and a connection that I never really thought of was. Uh, the the three wise men, there being three, and then there being the Trinity. Yeah. Never even cross. Yeah. That's how. Yeah, that's how how good I am with that. Kind of, <laughs> never even crossed my mind. I was like, I don't know. There's three. There's three different places. Right? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that's so cool. All right. Um, where one are we on? Seven and eight. That's good. So uh, why do you think? Jesus performed many signs and wonders during his public ministry so people would see that he was God and was weak and happy. Perfect. And then which of Jesus' miracles do you find most interesting and then marvelous? So there's four types of miracles. Miracles of supply, miracles of healing, miracles of nature, and the casting out of demons. So we kind of diverged from the question a little bit and we talked about all four. Um, but we found all four to be um, quite interesting and kind of a lot to say about it. Um, we did comment that the first three types, the flat and healing in nature, is one that we're more familiar with. Um, and Joan talked as much about the casting out of demons. And so we kind of spent a little bit of time on that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, there's no right answer on that one. <laughs> no best miracle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Uh, nine and ten. So number nine is, why is it important to know the details of Jesus' life? Because through his life, Jesus reveals to us the truth of who he is, the life he has planned for us, and the way we are to live in order to spend eternity with him. Um, and with these uh, teachings, we are to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God, and through that belief, we may have life in his name. Very long and good answer. The one that they give in the book is pretty simple. It's just uh, what just shows us what a what a great or full human life could be like. Yeah, 
But yours was much more precise. Expanded. Yeah, expanded. And what did you guys get for ten? So what kind of life does Jesus offer us? We were stuck on this one. It wasn't a very clear answer to us in the book. Um, but it said uh, he offers us uh, holy, selfless, and of the kingdom um, to live a life like Jesus has led. Yeah. Very good. So those two answers were very similar. Um, just really demonstrates that like that example is there. It's right there. We can read all the Gospels. We can see what the example is. There's the challenge. Now can we can we meet it? All right. Next two. Great. Thirteen and fourteen. Thirteen was the baptism. Uh, one of the sacraments that represents uh, spiritual death, rebirth, forgiveness of sin, and the possibility of heaven. Uh, Great. Second half, thirteen and part two, please. Is found that baptism is essential to the Christian life. Yeah, I think you'll kind of answer this one. Um, to be interpreted, my interpretation is you know, it's essential to me because it allows us to forgive sin and give me the possibility of going to heaven. Yeah, those are correct. And, and the book also said, adds, like, Jesus himself was baptized. So that kind of shows its importance. Uh, and as we saw in the stained glass, it was, like, commanded to... To us like go out and baptize so he says it he does it makes it kind of important and then 14 Very similar to 13. Yeah. Essential work of baptism is the representation of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. Yeah, exactly. So, as we saw with those, uh, with the four types, or the four kind of ways to think about baptism, is that you die in Christ when you're baptized, but then you're reborn. You're. you're, you're you're also renewed in Christ when you baptize. So it's kind of, I like the way that you said it. it's like a representation of the passion. Again, not something I ever put together, uh, that, that it represents the, the same passion that Jesus went through. Uh, but that's, that's a good way to think about it. All right, last two, 15 and 16. What do we got? Um, so 16 um, asks about which, um, from the ways that baptism is foreshadowed in the Old Testament, which is the most beautiful and or marvelous. Um, so we looked at the parting of the Red Sea, um, and I mostly gave the example in like, my kids have a um, Bible story, like pop up, flip it, like in a math book. And all three of my kids, at, at whatever point they were the age to enjoy that book, loved that page the most because you get to pull a flap and see the water like 
head out, and then there was this land between like two giant towers of water, and they just thought it was so amazing because it was not something like a flood they can kind of conceptualize and like understand, but they like saw the water disappear and were like amazed. So I just saw it through like their eyes and and how interesting and marvelous that would be to a kid to understand. So that's kind of what they Cool. In uh, 16, when we are baptized, we are no longer merely descendants of Adam. We are reborn as children of God. Why is that so important? As children of God, we inherit the right to enter and live in the kingdom of God. Perfect. Perfect. Well, it's really hard to work on it. We have a leader's book and all that. <laughs> yes. Reader's book is helpful. I, I did look at it until we already came up. With All right. Well, thank you guys for doing an awesome job on that. Um, we have like three minutes to, to review the sacred art, so let's let's do it. Um, get your handy dandy smartphone out and scan it if you can. There are six figures uh, in the fresco. Look at them and try to identify them. So we, we know Jesus, right? John the Baptist. Yes, we think Mary is here. We think in Mary. Okay. What about this dude? <laughs> Um, I don't think it was, uh, the answer wasn't like 100% uh, when I looked at it. I'm trying to remember. I know that some of them are like historical figures, not not like present, right. not uh, time uh, period figures, uh, but I can't remember and it would take me too long to look it up. <laughs> so let's look at this one. When you look at this painting, where does your eye naturally go? What or whom do you look at first? It's kind of obvious, yeah. Uh, what or whom are you drawn to to focus the longest? Kind of obvious. It's a fresco. What is a fresco? What are some reasons that a fresco like this would be painted in monastery wall? Does anybody, do we have anybody that's an art person that knows about frescoes? It's painted on walls. Yeah, and uh, I was reading about it a little bit. It was like, it's a, it's very imperfect and like allows for deviation as opposed to like putting it on a poster, you know, or I don't, I don't know what they would call that. Um, but it, yeah, canvas, yeah. It makes it a lot more imperfect. So I kind of want you to think about, well, why would, why would you choose that to put on a wall uh, instead of a canvas. We don't have time for that. It's interesting how his have like a cross on his halo, mm -hmm. but the others don't. Yeah. Anybody want to tackle this one? Since Jesus was free from sin and baptism 
wipes away our sin. Why did Jesus get baptized then? To be a model. Say what? To be a model. To be a model, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is there something else to add? Well, the thing that I, I never thought, I never thought of this, but in the video you talked about this, and it was a great point, because I always thought, like, why do you do that? Like, it's like, take a step back, like, be a model, okay? But I love what the video said, is, is that when he gets baptized, the, the, the gospel narrative says, the skies, the clouds parted, the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove, and the voice of the Father says, Behold, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am all pleased. And the idea that that is what happened physically with Jesus, but it happened behind that veil of the metaphysical, that's happening with every single kid in fact. Yeah. At that moment, they're like, I don't, sometimes birds do get into our church, so I guess there's a chance that a bird could fly down on a kid. Um, I have that wisdom, but I've never seen it or heard of it. But it is happening, right? At that moment, if Jesus did it to say, I want you to do this, this is what's happening. Yeah. Like, the Father is claiming you as your, as, as his son, his daughter. I, I become your brother in that. I think that's a really powerful. That's, that's cool to me. I never thought of that until that video. Yeah. We don't have time for the Bible passage. <laughs> All right. You ready, Paul? I'm ready. Rock and roll. Let's go. I'm the hero. <laughs> and just to let you guys know, you too can be a hero. You too can be a saint. You too can be awesome. We need someone to do this next uh, month. Um, we've had amazing uh, examples already. But um, anyway. I've got two daughters, Mariana and Magdalena, fourth grade and first grade. Um, and January is pretty, it's a pretty cool month. There's a really cool game. We'll talk about that in a second. But before I get started, if you look at, in the parent guide, 114 and 115, that's the one where it's got the little, um, the book, right? That book, that's the symbol uh, to do for your project. So there are these two activities for this month and they go really well hand in hand together. The first one is you look at Jesus' miracles, and it's fun because you're just like, let's talk, just like you guys, like, what is your favorite, or what's the most impressive? Talk about some miracles. You're gonna go through that throughout the, the month and be like, all right, make an artistic account of um, your uh, favorite miracle. And you can have each of your kids do one um, for Jesus. And then, so that's like Jesus working in the Gospels, and then here you say, all right, how does Jesus work in our lives, like what's a moment where we encounter God in our own family story? So I would recommend having each kid talk about, maybe draw a uh, depiction of, it could be his or her own first communion, it could be his big, si his big sister's first communion, it could be, um, you know, they give examples of like when a uh, family member got really ill and the family came together and, and prayed with and for this person and there was a recovery, or even if there wasn't necessarily a recovery, that recognition of peace. Like I, I know when I was a kid, my grandmother died in my house. She came, she had cancer, terminal cancer, and she came to die. And uh, in the middle of the night one night, my mom and dad woke us up. And I also, like Mike, have six, uh, six brothers and sisters, five brothers and sisters. And uh, they were like, let's, you know, Oma is, is dying. So let's go. And so we came down, and I, I will never forget that, just being around her bed and just saying prayers with her. I mean, she was dying, but it was just a beautiful moment that was really, it's, it's, it's here forever. Um, so that would be something like I would do, even though it wasn't like, God didn't come down and like, sweet, oh, good prayer. All right, you're up, you're back. Uh, you know, she passed away, but it was still this beautiful moment. So anyway, um, now going back to Mike 316. This is the verse, if there's ever a verse to go over and over and over again, this verse is the verse of the month, and it is easy for kids to learn, and easy, like, you can Google it and be like, look, this stuff shows up all over the place, right? Like, people will be at sporting events, like, John 316, whatever it is, um, that you see it, but it's, it is a great quote to really go over and over and over again with your kids, um, and, it, and it, it works with every single lesson. All right. Some cool stuff. Oh, St. Paul is um, the uh, saint of the month, and his, the feast of the conversion of St. Paul comes up 
So great uh, day to read his story um, is is on his the, the celebration of his conversion, um, and um, there's a great uh, painting by Caravaggio. There's two different paintings by Caravaggio on the conversion of Saint Paul. So many great artistic representations to really examine um, with Saint Paul. Okay, um, page 107. Uh, this is a great little way to just get the, the month started. I would say just read it with your kids, talk about it, go through it, just ask them some questions. Um, not really much to do other than just listen and talk about who Jesus is and his mission. Um, then the miracles. So Mariana, my fourth grader, she was like, yes, I want to do the, the hard one. If you go to pages 87 and 89 in the kids' book, they both, um, they both do that. Uh, okay, that's good. I don't know what, anyway, um, I don't know how to do that. Uh, get rid of that, but I'll figure it out. Anyway, not that. <laughs> there we go, somehow. All right, I'm going to do this. There it is. That's the button I needed. Um, 87, so my little one, she just, I just read her the stories, two gospels. I actually had the older one read to her, uh, which is cool. Um, she colored this sheet, my, Mariana didn't, but Magdalena did, and then she just drew the story right here. Um, and really cool, I don't know, I know I keep pushing the chosen. Um, there's an episode in season one where both of these miracles are in the same episode. So it's a really cool opportunity to see them live, acted out, super powerful. I want to say it's episode five or six. Anyway. It's, it's awesome. It's one where it starts with the leper, and then it goes to the, one, the thing where they rip open the roof and they drop the paralytic through the thing. Just awesome. Um, Mariana, though, as you can see, she, uh, she was like, she loves so going into the Bible and writing the summaries and stuff and finding. It's a great opportunity for the older students to, to familiarize themselves with using their Bible, so I recommend encouraging them to do it and do it with them. It's awesome. Um, Jesus forgives sins, pretty simple one. Um, okay, the redemption game, the redemption game. Awesome uh, thing, set aside an hour or so, and this is a really cool game because basically everybody puts together, everybody gets together in the family, um, and you name one really valuable thing, one thing that you love. My older daughter has this old beat up ratty blanket that she loves. So she put Bink in the other one, just got for Christmas like this humongous Squishamallow thing. So she put her giant Squishamallow in, I put my phone in. And um, then we went to my, my wife, we made her the, uh, the, the referee, the arbiter, and she gave each one of us, so we lost these things, and we could not get them. And she came up with, which, it was so weird, she had stuff so ready for me to do, it was amazing. Um, it was like, one job for me was clean out my closet. She wanted, and so, but I couldn't redeem my own thing. I redeemed someone else, so we pull that names out of the hat. So I redeemed the Squishamello for my daughter Magdalena. Magdalena redeemed the blanket for Mariana. Mariana redeemed the phone for me, and I couldn't, we couldn't use these things. And so you pick something that takes about an hour to do something that's hard. Um, they had to clean up their little playroom. Um, and anyway, so Mariana was like, it was terrible. I don't ever want to have to redeem anything again. Oh. But, but anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun little game. Get some chores done that maybe you've been putting off. And um, it teaches about the idea of sacrificing for others and you kind of have a post-game kind of recap, think through on it, which is really fun. Um, moving forward. Um, a lot of these are, are, are cool, but pretty basic stuff, you know, uh, kind of thinking about others, which is great. Uh, John 3.16, baptism, show that video. My kids love the video, they love it. Um, and it works with all ages. I mean, as adults, it works, right? Like, I watch it, I show it during our baptism class to the adults that come. Um, I think it's a great video. So show that, that's a great framework uh, to go through. And then there's a couple of little exercise, little activities to think about baptism. Um, that are great. That's pretty much January in a uh, nutshell. Um, yeah, it's, it's not that much. So really, I, I think definitely do that redemption game. It's a fun one, um, and it really gets you thinking about redeeming stuff. All right, so
So that's that's that. That's January. The let's go over what Mike. Great job, Mike. By the way, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Um, thank you for being here. Key points, number one, this is a really important point. Jesus is God. Okay, if you don't uh, have that, then maybe start over again with the book. <laughs> number two, uh, Jesus performed miracles. We we're talking, Mike, Mike was like, oh man, they get some corny metaphors uh, in the book. They, they really emphasize this idea like, the, 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 uh, the, the miracles are Jesus' ID card, right? He's like, yes, I am God and I can do a miracle. So that's my ID card. Um, and then Jesus came, he came to earth to call everyone and he, tells us to go forth to all nations preaching the good news. Um, what else? God so loved the Mike. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believed in him might not perish but might have eternal life. That's that quote, John chapter 3, verse 16. Great quote. If your kids take away one Bible verse from this whole year, let it be that one. It's awesome. Baptism forgives original sin and makes us adopted children of God. And by baptism, by Jesus coming, he is the bridge for us. We have heaven that is open to us. He died for our sins. He redeemed us. Hence that redemption game. That's that. Alrighty. Fun stuff coming up. January, the next uh, community mass, which we would love to get some um, kids to read and to do some volunteer uh, for readers and stuff like that. So I will send out an email. But there's also a sign-up sheet. So if you um, think your kids might be interested, or even if you don't think so, but you want to sign them up, sign them up. January 23rd. Uh, there will be children's choir that day. The children's choir will meet not today, but the next two Tuesdays. They'll be meeting. Then the next parent meeting is, we had originally scheduled February 8th. I don't know why, that's not the first Tuesday. So I'm moving it to February 1st. So that's a change, just be aware of that. Um, because February is so short, I feel like if we meet on February 8th, then you're like halfway done with February. So let's meet on February 1st. Um, first reconciliation retreat for anyone who is going to receive that sacrament this year. Saturday, January 22nd, I will email more details. It's usually a couple hours um, on a Saturday um, in the midday towards the afternoon. Um, second confirmation retreat for all confirmandi, and all teenagers are allowed to come to this, but specifically our confirmandi, if it's on Sunday, January 23rd, from six to nine, it is here. The same group of kids are coming back. Um, in theory, they will not be all, so the last time there's 12 of these kids, only four of them were able to come because of the other eight were quarantined for COVID and stuff because they were going traveling around. So hopefully they've all gotten all that out of their system and there will be a huge number of them. But the four that came were awesome. They did a great job for those parents who had kids. There. Speaking of baptism, this Sunday is the Feast of our baptism, baptism of our Lord. And Father Don loves to uh, have actual baptisms take place during Mass. And this year, Brian and Amy's daughter Elaine is actually going to be baptized at the 930 Mass. So that's super cool. Um, we're excited for Elaine, we're excited for Brian and Amy. Um, and then at the 11 o'clock Mass, there's another little girl who's going to be baptized at the 11 o'clock Mass. So come to Mass at either 930 or 11 and see an actual baptism. Bring your kids so they can see, because none of the kids don't remember what happened at their baptism usually. Um, let them see. Um, also, anyone who can help this Sunday after that 11 o'clock Mass, at noon, we are going to be taking down the Christmas decorations because we are Catholics and Christmas is still going on. Merry Christmas. It goes all the way through this Sunday, the Feast of the Baptism of our Lord. That is all I got. So we're going to close with the prayer to the Holy Spirit. It's a great prayer. Um, I love this prayer. I say this prayer all the time. I ask the Holy Spirit to help me. Um, and it's an awesome, powerful prayer. So join me in asking the Holy Spirit to come down as we move forth through January and help teach our kids these important truths that God has revealed to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Edward, pray for us. Thank you guys, thanks for coming. I know that it's a crazy, crazy time. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Uh, Mike and I are both, we had the two safest people here. We both had a Christmas with COVID, so we are both negative and recovered, so uh, we, we actually probably could have figured on that stuff, but we don't want to freak anybody out. Take care guys, have a great month, and we'll see you uh, around. <laughs>